Hi, this is Dr. Dave. Now that you've finished up Tech 3, it's time to move on to documenting your work in an infographic. And I'm going to show you how, how to get started on that, and I've provided you with a few things here to help you do that. So when you go into your shared folder, you're going to see a new file here. Right, the one you have been working with is this Math 212 Project 1 Team 0. The green icon says it's a Google Sheet. You should see a similar file, but now with a yellow or gold icon. And what that is, is that is a, a Google Slide file. If you're in Math 172 Finite Math, all of these will say Math MAT 172. If you're in Math 212 Survey of Calculus, then it's going to be Math 212. So let me show you some of the things that are possible with Google Slides. So what you see here is a little bit of a graphic, and, and it's got uh, a graph in it, a table, some arrows, some text, uh, all sorts of things like that. What I want to do is demonstrate to you how this process works. So let's go ahead and open up that uh, project, uh, that Google Slides folder. And when you open it up, what you're going to see is a blank slide here that I've created for you and shared with the rest of your team. This is uh, 16 inches high, 8 inches wide. Typically, infographics are narrow and very high so that they fit on web, web pages nicely. And you can see you have an option for having more of these slides right here. Sometimes uh, people like to work on separate versions of these things. However, what you're going to turn in is a final version. And when you're done with creating this infographic, make sure that you indicate to me somehow that the one slide that's over here is your final version. One way you can do that is where you see click to add notes here you can just type final version. That tells me that your team all contributed to this and this is the one that you want me to grade. There may be other ones sitting over here, however the one that says final version and it'd be nice if it was up at the top would be the one that I would grade. So if you want to add more slides here so you can try and experiment with some things, there's two ways to do that you can go up here and click on the plus and that will add a slide in the default uh, style however what's probably better to do is to go up and sit, click that little triangle there and these are all the formats that you can put in your slide if you go down to the very bottom there's one that says blank for what we're doing a blank slide is probably best so there, now you see that blank slide right there and we could work in that. Or you can click up to the one above and be working in there. So either way, your teammates can be working on different pieces, but remember, you're all going to submit only one particular slide here and that's the slide that I'm going to grade. So let's make some changes to this. One of the things that people typically want to do is to change the background a little bit. So that would be under where you see background. If I click on that, it's going to give me some options. I can make the background an image, which I would then go ahead and choose from my hard drive. It'd have to already be uh, set up on my hard drive. Or I can go up here and choose a color. So I'm going to try something like this blue here. Click done, and there's that blue background. One of the other things I probably will want to do is to add a graph from the Google Sheet that I've been working with. So let me go back and go into my Google Drive and open up my Google Sheet. Let me go ahead and find what I want to work with. And Let's say I want to go ahead and paste in this average cost function. There's two ways to do this. Some browsers work better with the first way, other browsers work better with the second way. If you're using the Google Chrome browser, it's probably easiest to go up here, click on this little uh, triangle, 
and then say copy chart. Once you've done that, you can go over to your uh, Google Slides and simply say edit, paste. That will go ahead and copy it in here. And once it's in here, you can click on it and move it around a little bit. Notice when I move it around, it'll help me to show when it's centered on the page. So I could have something like that. Now, if copying and pasting doesn't work, the other option is to go ahead and go into this same spot with that triangle and say save image. What this is going to do is it's going to go ahead and save that image onto your hard drive. And then once I'm over here in my project, I need to go find that on my hard drive and tell it to insert that image. So I'll say insert image. And now I need to locate that on my hard drive. So I'll choose an image to upload. And now I need to go find it. So there it is. Click open. It's going to go ahead and put that into there. Now I can see that particular graph. So I can move it to where I want. Depending on whether you're doing a finite math or survey of calculus project, a graph may or may not be something that you actually want in there. But I want to show you the option of either copying and pasting from another Google app or if you have an image already on your hard drive, you can insert that. If you decide that you don't want to include this image and you want to get rid of it, you can click on it and press the delete button on your keyboard. So what you do is kind of up to you. Now another thing that people typically want to do in their infographic is to add text. And you can add text using this button right here. So if I click on it, move over here, I'm going to click on my mouse using the left button and holding it down, I'm going to drag. Now that I have there, I'm going to type some text. Now you'll notice that this is really small, but of course when you look at this, this is a huge piece of paper. So if I need to zoom in, I can go up to the zoom button and I can click on this. And I may decide that that's the right size or I may decide I want to have it larger. If I want to have it larger, right now I'm in the zoom feature and I'm using the left mouse button to zoom, the right mouse button to zoom back out. If I want to edit this, I'm going to go click on this little button that says select. Click here and now I can go highlight this and go up and change the font size maybe to 24. Once I'm done I might grab the corner of this and make it a little bit smaller. But there now I have my text box and if I click on it and grab it I can move it anywhere I want on this image. If I want to have a different colored font I can go in and select it and then go up to the colors here and tell it maybe red. I can even go in here, select it, and then tell it that I want it in a different type of font. Maybe I want it in Consolas. If it kind of doesn't fit anymore, I can always go ahead and stretch this box and make it a little bit bigger. Often on our graphs, we want to add a little bit to that. Sometimes people like to add a point onto here. You could do that back in Google Sheets, but it's probably easier to come up here and say shape and then look for a shape that might be reasonable for a point like that circle. Then I can hold down my mouse button and make a little circle. So if I want to give the outline a particular color, I can go up here and click green. If I want to fill it, I could also do the same thing. Now when I look at it, I can see my nice little dot there and to move it to where I want it, I could go ahead and move it along the graph. That's probably a lot easier than trying to put a point on in Google Sheets. Another thing that people like to do is to use arrows. 
So if I go up here to the select line and then grab arrow, I can go ahead and put an arrow on here. Now that's an awfully small arrow, so if I click on it again, I could go up and make a bigger line. Let's see, line weight, and move that up to 8 pixels. I could also change the color like I did before. And then maybe I want to uh, add some text on here like I did before. I go to the text box, draw it on the picture, and then I could type on it. And then maybe change the font color again. So you've got lots of options for doing things. And as I said before, not only are there circles here, when I go up to shapes, there's all sorts of little things I can put in here, like a call out. And then I can go ahead and put text inside of there. Now for finite math, one of the things that people often want to use are tables. Because you might want to put a matrix into your infographic, and the easiest way to do that is to create a table. So I'm going to go up and say insert table. If I want this to be a 3 by 4 matrix, I'll hold the mouse button down and do something like that. It creates the table for me. And by the way, the lines on this table, the colors, everything, those things can be modified using your buttons up here. But then I can type in my values, whatever those values may be. And when you look at it, you might decide, oh, I want those larger. So you could select and then put it in a bigger font. If you want these things centered, you can select them again by dragging your mouse across them. And then go up to here and align them, say, in the center. You have lots of options for doing things here. If that's too big, you can also make this smaller. You can also move the size of the columns around here a little bit too. I encourage you to go ahead and play with these things a little bit so it looks uh, the best you think you can make it. So let's go ahead and zoom back out here and see what this looks like. If I zoom too far out, one of the things that often people like to do is to kind of fit it on the screen. That's what this button does right here. And now I can see kind of a, a better view where everything is there. That might help you to look at this and say, ah, I want to select. I want to move this somewhere else, like maybe down here. So these are just some of the options that you can use to create your infographic. And uh, what you should be thinking about now is exactly how do you want to use your infographic to prove your point. Remember, there were some questions in the project letter. Those need to be answered in this infographic. And you want to do it thinking of your audience as not your instructor, but the person that wrote you the letters. So you've got a rough draft that's coming up here soon. Make sure you get the mathematics in there so I can check that mathematics on the rough draft and then use the following week to kind of make your infographic more beautiful and to communicate uh, what you want to communicate better.